Hello guys and welcome back to Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about tree maps in Java. Now if you remember in the last lecture we talked about hash maps in Java and we also had a look at an example where we saw how a hash map works and how we can use a hash map. We also had a look at different utility methods of the hash map as well. Now in today's lecture we are going to focus on tree maps, which is an another type of map as we discussed when we were discussing about the map framework. And the main property of a tree map is that when you enter elements into a map, they will naturally be sorted or naturally be ordered. Now, when I say naturally ordered, what it means that if you put the keys as let's say integer, then the tree map will automatically sort all the map entries in an integer sorted fashion where you'll see the natural number sorting uh, behavior like one, two, three, and so on. Similarly, if you store alphabets or strings, then they, then those will be sorted in a natural sorting alphabetical order starting from A to Z. So these are the, uh, these are the data types which the Java is already aware of on how to sort them like integers, doubles, floats, strings, etc. But there can be a case where you have your custom key. This particular key is your own custom class. If that is the behavior or if that is the scenario, then in that case, you will have to provide an implementation to Java to know how to sort those elements because Java doesn't know, for example, a student class or an account class. Java doesn't know how to sort that. So if you have that kind of scenario, then in those cases, you will have to provide your own sorting implementation. And we will cover about what kind of sorting implementation you can provide in those kind of scenarios in the upcoming lectures. For now, we will look at, have a look at an example of tree map where you can see that I've created a class which is called tree map demo. And I have initialized a tree map with the keys as integer and the values as string. So this means that each entry of the map will have key as the integer value and the value of that particular entry will be of string type. So basically an integer to string mapping is what each entry of this tree map is going to store. So nothing uh, different here. You would have already seen this kind of, uh, this kind of initialization for any kind of map. And after that at line 11, I use the standard put method of the map and I, I started storing the values. So at line 11, I'm saying store three and a. So three is the key and string a. Remember, this is not a character. This is a string because I have specified string here. If you specify a character here and if you try to store a string, this is going to throw an error uh, and you need to fix that. So I store three as the key and a as string as the value. Similarly, at line 12, I store two as the key and B as the value. And at line C, I store one as the key and C as the value. So these integers are the keys and the string are the values. And if I just put them and if I just try to print them, what happens? What kind of order can we expect? Let's try to analyze that. So I right click on this, I go to run as, and I go to run as Java application. It will run the program because I have a static void main method. And now you see that the map is printed in a different fashion than the way it was added. We added the map elements in this sequence that we added 3a first, 2b second, and 1c as the third element. But when we started printing them, we saw 1c printed first, 2b printed second, and 3C, 3A printed third. So what this denotes that this tree map, because the key was integer here, it automatically sorted these keys into a natural order sorting. And it provided, when I tried to access the map, it provided the access in that sorted sequence only. No matter how many times you run this particular program, it is always going to return the map in the same format in the same sequence. The sequence of representation of the elements is not going to change. And you can basically do the similar behavior. For example, if I just 
change this to string and integer let's do it like this and if i again swap the elements here as well i say a comma three and i say b comma two and here i can say c comma one if i do this i just switch the keys and values position now the string is the key and the integer is the value and let me just put these two before a so that we can demonstrate the behavior of the tree map properly so i'm inserting b2 first and c1 second and a3 third and i just save this file and now let's run this file and let's see how the output comes so now you can see that since the key is now string it has applied it has automatically applied the natural sorting ordering of strings which is starting from a going till z and that's why you see a entry as the first entry b entry as a second entry and the c entry as the third entry again no matter how many times you run it or you iterate over it you try to access it you will always get the sequence in the same fashion so this is a basic overview of how tree maps work now you can and i would strongly recommend you to go and read about all the other methods which are available in the tree map which you can use for example how can you remove elements how can you uh, how can you iterate the elements of the tree map etc in fact the iteration is is going to be exactly the same way as we have seen in the case of hash maps because iteration behavior doesn't change but to uh, if you want to see what all different kinds of methods tree map support it supports a lot of different methods we can't cover all of them in this short tutorial but i would strongly recommend you to go and read the java docs api of the tree map to get familiar with those methods so that you know what kind of functionalities tree map can provide so this is it for today's lecture and in the next session we are going to have a look at how we can use stacks and we will look at a hands-on example of how we can build stack and how we can use them in a real life scenario if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session